a thing called a catastrophic bushfire day um, which is pretty intense uh, because yeah it gets pretty bushfire in general but it's never catastrophic but today the weather is insane not only is it sort of heading on towards 40s which is fine uh, generally but the winds are making it really really dangerous and we live near the Grampians region uh, which is in Western Victoria and that thing's lit up like a Christmas tree on the emergency app today um, so about 15 minutes away from us there's a town called Pomonal and Pomonal has been told to just get out um, and some areas near there have been told it's too late to get out you just need to find shelter where you can and so that's the state of things in this neck of the woods uh, today so at the moment uh, the emergency app says well, we're okay even though we're clearly smoked out um, but it's safe enough here but we just got to keep our eye on it so back in December I scored a sweet deal on a 9 meter polytunnel and we've just been waiting for the right time to put this thing together it's nothing too crazy just off catch.com.au and it cost us a bit under 300 bucks We've started out by clearing the grass underneath the spot and laying out weed matting and if we did this right we would have done it over a more levelled area but we were probably a bit lazy and it, I'm sure it's something that's going to annoy us for the rest of the life of this tunnel. The tools that this comes with are these two. Keep your allen key, get rid of that one and use your drill bit that has the right bit to go on the nuts that it comes with because it will save your sanity. Now this is definitely a two-person job to put it together unless you've got a pretty decent plan in place to hold many things for you if you want to do it solo but I'm super glad Betty was able to sneak away from her business duties to give me a hand on this project. <laughs> the design isn't really that hard and the instructions were super clear so that's a great thing on this particular tunnel. By the end of day one on this project we got to the point of the frame all being stood up. Now we did actually leave it at this point for a little while because we had quite a lot of hot and windy days that just weren't optimal for getting the plastic up and finishing this job. Now I didn't actually film us putting the plastic on but I kind of wish I did because we almost lost it to the winds a couple of times which made the job quite difficult but it would have been really funny to watch. So where we've got to is we've obviously got the cover on now, uh, we've tied it down. The wind has been insane lately so I haven't actually filled it out yet. I'm waiting for some more material to come so I can weigh the thing down um, because we've got pegs in the bottom of the sides uh, at the moment and we can tell that it lifts during the night um, by how much the pegs have come up so it's probably lifting about that much at the moment uh, so I want to get some more heavy duty pieces in there to tie it down properly so there's no more movement at the moment we've got our timbers that we're actually planning to use for beds uh, just weighing down the edges but yeah that's not enough to keep it down at the minute so uh, I'm gonna wait until I get some more material in uh, and then I can start strapping it down to that um, and making it a bit heavier and then we can fill it in and start populating it with everything we want to grow. After a handy tip from uh, the local flower farmer, Angie, um, I got a bunch of these clips. So the clips are made to go on the ends here and hold the plastic down. I just got them off eBay, they were really cheap. Uh, these were 25mm ones, uh, but you can get them in a bunch of different sizes. So if you've got a similar greenhouse set up, just go check out what ones are appropriate for your greenhouse. And uh, yeah, you can get them real easy and it seems to be doing a really good trick at, at holding it nice and tight. Here you can see I've just been playing around with how I'm going to set out the beds later on. We're going to have tomatoes running down the centre where we can string them up best and give them the most amount of space and we'll also end up with beds on either side for other veggies. It's been another hot day today, uh, well into the 30s, but I've managed to get some stuff done in the hoop house. Um, so for starters, because we're worried about the wind obviously, we've started putting uh, this fence cattle panel over the top of it to weigh it down. I'm actually going to start putting some uh, beds on the outside here as well, maybe with just something that will climb up a little bit but not, the, not excessively, um, just to help with the afternoon sun that hits this side so that should help things not 
overcook in the greenhouse rather than just stay at warm temperatures so that should help and then inside I've started with making the first bed down the middle so we will have a bed down this side bed down that side and this one through the middle and then I've just done a bit of timber up the top that I've hooked on to the hoop house two parts for that um, one is that it's going to help secure the roof down to heavier things down here and hopefully help it uh, with the wind issues again and secondly we're going to grow things like tomatoes up here and string them to the top and then they can uh, be supported all the way up i had some issues here um, you can see that this one bends in there was it was too tough for me um, I probably could have got some more tools involved and straightened it out, but I thought, bugger it, it's not that big of a deal um, since I'm just building it for myself and it's not going to cause any grief with growing things. But uh, over the time that these have been stored, they've warped um, and I just couldn't straighten them out. This side doesn't look too bad. That one's secured fine, but this one uh, is on all kinds of leans up this end. It's all right down the other end, um, but this end, it just copped it. The greenhouse is on a fall that goes down that way and the ground isn't as flat as one would hope for um, so I was a bit worried about soil coming out from underneath when I put it down but it seems to be all right at the moment I'll give it a good decent water and see if that sort of flushes anything loose out the bottom you can see down here just a little bit came out at that spot um, but I think it'll be fine and when it compacts down it shouldn't stop uh, it should stop moving around too much so the worst that we're going to lose is probably just at this beginning. So I've put soil in there and compost and I've given it a go over with just a little bit of liquid food. Um, I'm going to leave that tonight and see how it goes overnight before I start actually planting some things in there tomorrow. And here's how it looks all planted out. We've also got some irrigation there that we'll hook up later. Someone's got a little bit too big for his boots and <laughs> it's fallen in and I've just lifted it out. But you can see he's doing pretty well there. He's getting too big though, so I'm gonna have to transfer him into a bucket. Here is the first success story. Uh, it's obviously got a lot of green tomatoes on it now. Um, that's because all the red ones we've been harvesting and selling, and they've been going really well. So you can see how well that's doing. No, it's, it's really productive, so that's awesome. We've also got, uh, in a cleaned paint bucket, I've transferred over this pumpkin. It's actually a buttoned up pumpkin and it's growing all the way over here. So my plan is when it starts fruiting that I'm going to make little hammocks uh, for the pumpkins to hang off so they don't get too heavy for the vine hanging up there. But yeah, that started out in one of these just like this and it grew so big that we just needed to transfer it across and that's the same thing I'm going to do now with this tomato. So I've got three other tomatoes here that are not too far behind this first one. This came started out in the greenhouse, but I kept bumping it all the time. We put it near the door so it was in a better spot, but the wind actually knocked it over one time and it got really destroyed, but it's actually come back really well. One growing here, one growing over there. So quite a few. It's flowering. You can see that it's got you can see that it's got flowers going on at the moment. So yeah. Doing well. Now these lettuces I actually planted the first time I did a video about this um, and they don't look crash hot at the moment. We've actually eaten them back to basically nothing and it grew back again but we had them on the back step and the wind knocked them off and they were just sitting in the garden in no water for like a, probably a whole day before I realised uh, what had happened so they've just been put in water again so they've come back a little bit um, but they're not looking super crash hot at the minute um, just because they've been through the ringer. Especially this one. It was flowering uh, when it happened and it's just kind of died off those bits, but it is definitely um, still alive. So we'll give it some time before we start eating it again. Put it in a Bunnings bucket and tied it up here to where the grapes are growing, just to give it some stability. Something to grow on, something to pin to. These little clips like we've shown you in previous videos.
So here I am leaving work thinking the wind was a little bit entertaining at this point. So today is a catastrophic fire danger day. Uh, not because of the heat, although it is 37 degrees, but because of the ridiculous winds. And as you can see, our little greenhouse has died. It just ripped the top off, it ripped it apart and threw it over and we've lost a bit. Anyway, here's what it is. The wind has taken out the greenhouse, which really upset me. But there's not much we can do. The covers all come off and I've sort of strung some of the tomatoes up again, but they were all flopped over because they were just ripped off. Um, so I don't know if they'll survive or if they'll just die off, but keeping my fingers crossed. And then a lot of the stuff up the back just got knocked off. So a lot of our seedlings en ended up on the ground. Um, but yeah, we were sort of almost there on our capsicums. But yeah, windy. I think we've done what we can do around here and it's just going to be watch and, and wait and see what happens. But yeah, not good. So this is the Emergency Vic website uh, where we go to see if there's anything going on that has emergency warnings and you can see this area here is Pomona which isn't very far from our house. You can see there's some emergency warning take shelter now. That means that there's no time to escape. They can't get out. They just need to stay put. Uh, there's bushfires in random areas around there. That one says other. I think it's another house fire. Uh, in the area it turned out that there was about 44 houses that are lost I heard and one life in the end. So this is only about 10 minutes from our house, 10-15 minutes from our house. You can see uh, just over here that's the area we're in Ararat over there and the whole Grampians Wimmera region there uh, is just like catastrophic bushfire. Catastrophic is pretty insane. Um, in Australia, our bushfire levels start at high pretty much. So that green area is high. Um, but yeah, catastrophic is just not very often that happens. And it's a bit of an end of days thing. So yeah, Ararat's our point there. So not very far off. So this is pretty hectic. Uh, we were all right in the end. The next day things cleared up and we were safe. Uh, it's the first time that we've ever felt like we needed an escape emergency plan and we'd packed a go bag so it was pretty scary but we're on the other side now and we're okay.